Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You're watching The Big Picture with me, Frank Pereira. The regulator for genetically modified crops has given the green signal for commercial cultivation of GM mustard in the country. In a submission to the Environment Ministry, Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee has given a positive recommendation but with certain conditions. With the GEAC nod, the GM mustard developed by the Delhi University gets closer to becoming India's first edible GM crop. Several groups are opposing the GEAC's decision. RSS affiliates Swadeshi Jagran Munch criticized the move, saying allowing the commercial use of GM mustard would impact allied agri activities. Some anti GM activists asserted that in okaying the commercial use of GM mustard, the GEAC has yet again proven to be unscientific and uncaring to the health of citizens. On this edition of The Big Picture, we will analyze the pros and cons of GM mustard. Joining me on the program today are Chetan Chauhan of the Hindustan Times, Suman Sahai Chairperson Jean Campaign, Tajamul Haq, former Chairman, Commission for Agricultural Cost and Prices, and N.K. Shukla, Joint Secretary, All India Kisan Sabha. Mr. Haq, I'd like to begin with you, of course, and ask you, what do you think of the GEAC's nod uh, to GM mustard? Uh, first of all, I should say that the timing of this, particularly because already the case was pending in the Supreme Court and they have not yet decided and the government also will not be in a position to decide on this unless the Supreme Court finally gives its judgment. So keeping this in view, I think uh, the timing is uh, very important in the sense whether the government will be in a position to move uh, or accept this recommendation. Uh, of the GEC. Second thing is that um, this area of GM crops has been quite controversial for quite some time. Not that uh, India does not need technological innovations. India needs technological innovations in respect of almost all crops, all you know, including livestock fisheries in every field. But then uh, uh, this has been questioned by several people, as you know, um, uh, particularly Saudi Jagran Manj recently has mounted a severe attack on this and then they say that um, there, are, uh, there is evidence that uh, this causes some kind of health problem. So if it has a health problem and if it is not foolproof, so I think government should be a little careful in going about it. Okay, sure, fair enough. N.K. Shukla, is there a problem with the desi varieties of mustard? Is that why this GM variety of mustard is being approved? What is the problem really here? I think there is no problem <clears throat> and we have been opposing this rushing towards GM variety because this uh, mustard used for edible oil and also their leaves are eaten and also that is used for Ayurvedic medicines for thousands of years. So we don't think any problem. So, uh, All India Kisan Sabha is not opposed to any scientific development or uh, hybrid seeds. But the question is, you have to keep in mind what will be the impact of on the health of our people, hmm. on the environment, on the ecological system, on the living organs. All these things have to be kept in mind before allowing any GM food in our food chain. So we are opposed to that, what they have done and they are rushing. It is in Supreme Court pending, otherwise they would have, might have announced uh, by this time. So, but uh, we are strongly opposed to sure. this, this way. Suman Sahai, your, your NGO <clears throat> is someone who has been opposed to GM crops right from the beginning. You know, as far as an edible GM crop is concerned, what kind of health hazards does this pose? I think first I'd like to clarify and say that Gene Campaign as a scientific organization has not been a blanco or post GM crop organization. We, have, we are scientific and we critically analyze the data uh, and uh, the processes, the regulatory processes by which GM technology is being adopted and both of them uh, are flawed. Even now, if you look at the way that GM technology is being adopted, the same thing that happened with BT Brinjal, the GAC approved and left the, the cat at the door of the minister. 
that the GAC, the scientific body, which should be a scientific body, has said, we're fine with it. Now let the minister take a call. The same thing is happening with mustard. The GAC says, we're fine with it. Now let the minister take a call. That means your regulatory systems are not kosher. Your regulatory systems are ad hoc and politicized. As has been pointed out, this thing is in the Supreme Court. Now, unless the Supreme Court gives clarity on what has to happen, it's ridiculous to go through these intermediary measures. Having said that, I'd like to say that, you know, the health and environmental hazards have been discussed, discussed for the last 100 years. And, and we go on repeating the same thing. But I would like to emphasize one thing, and that is that apart from the scientific issue to any technology, there are social and economic concerns. And the social and economic concerns are as important. Are they good for farmers? In the case of GM mustard, farmers, especially in Punjab and the mustard growing areas, have said we don't need new varieties. We need a better policy. We need better pricing. We need to rationalize our input costs against the cost that we get for mustard when we sell it in the market. If you can't solve those problems, which are the problems that farmers suffer, bringing in yet another technology, yet another GM mustard is unlikely to solve those problems. So I think I'd like to put on the table that just saying for or against GM mustard is not at all going to cut any ice anymore. You have to go into policy, you have to go into the regulatory framework, and you have to go into seeing how this country is adopting GM technology, and I don't think we're doing it in the right way. You know, Chetan Chauhan, we've had several discussions, you and I, on this program, and we've spoken about policy, we've spoken about regulation, and we've sp spoken about a holistic approach. Yet again, we are sitting down at the table today and talking about the same thing. This somehow doesn't seem to happen. Why is it so? I think the GAC, uh, as a regulatory body for uh, GM or biotechnology, should be totally independent of the government. It should be a regulatory body formed under a law which has its powers and appraisal mechanism, and it should be a transparent body. Unlike the present GAC, which is totally an opaque body, if GAC has decided and recommended to the government they should have put it on the website of GAC. What are the recommendations? What are the conditions? How did they find that GM mustard was safe? Because there have been a lot of deliberations in the last three or four GAC meetings on this issue. And for general public, there is no awareness whether the GM crops are safe or not. If they are safe, why? If they are not, why? So the process of the government of creating awareness among people, I think, has been totally repeated in the last 15 years in of GM crops, the push which the government has given, uh, the awareness among people has been poor. So this sort of a blind push, I can understand, has come from the Prime Minister's office because I remember, recall in 2016 in August, Prime Minister's office has written to Environment Ministry that you should consider uh, GM mustard, uh, taking all the issues of safety into account. After that, the GC started pushing uh, GM mustard. But, but, that Niti, not, but that was not the case with the uh, BJP's manifesto in 2014. They said that they're going to look at GM completely and ensure that it comes out. You know, a, a you thorough know, scientific you know, you approach know, is... Now. Okay. You, you know, the Indian political system, what is said in the manifesto is rarely implemented. But, you know, the companies, the big MNCs, the big companies, if you need investment, and the government push to investment, will come through this sort of technological inventions or interventions if the government think and bring in a lot of investment, may create some sort of a job. So to give that sort of a picture to the international market that we are open to new ideas, new technology, the government has been trying. And this is not indifferent to BJP government. The UPA also tried it desperately. They tried for GM mustard. <coughs> when Prime Minister Manmohan Singh was in chair, he has written a number of letters, openly said that we need mm -hmm. technological interventions through GM. So biotechnology, the government has been trying to push. <coughs> Deepak Pentel, whose centre has developed this, have been a votary of GM crops for a long, long time. There have been a lot of criticism that is an opaque system. The way the trials have been done on ground, nobody knows no, what sort of tests ever, are done, ever. what of the field studies have been done. People don't know. They have not been shared in the name of that they are patented as third party, copyright. So if we have to have a technology which is going into the food chain, this sort of argument of copyright, patents, should not come into being. Everything people should know. Yeah. Sure. And, and, and you need to have an aware society, and they should decide whether they want GM or not. It should not be GAC, a body which have a biased Absolutely. Uh, scientific institution where the government recommends. Let there be few guys from who are guys who are opposing GM 
activists, uh, government scientists, it should be a holistic body. That's why I'm saying that the biotechnology regulator in India should be independent of the government under a law. Sure. You know, so once I, you know, this is not my forte really, and, uh, you know, please uh, correct me if I'm wrong at any point Go in ahead. time. But, you know, as far as this particular issue as such is concerned, under what circumstances was this GM muster really cleared and given this positive recommendation? Uh, I think that has been fairly well discussed. And I think Chetan was uh, indicating really from where the push has been coming. Because if you recall, years ago, 10, 12 years ago, ProAgro brought its GM mustard and ICR uh, rejected it. It was all done very badly. And it's the same, same gene construct. The barnes barstar gene construct has been used again in this case. So what has changed so dramatically? I think the question again comes to the way that we are adopting technology. And we are doing it in the worst possible way. Uh, Chetan pointed out to lack of transparency. Gene campaign has been at the forefront of asking for policy changes, both at the level of the GSE and making data available to the public. Every country in the world does it in some way or the other. We don't. Why don't we do it? If there is a lack of trust on the part of people, that has to be addressed. You can't bulldoze a technology, not anymore. Is, so, is, is that what, what is happening in this case right now? It is happening. When we asked for, in the case of BT Brinjal, Many years ago, we asked for the safety data of the trials that had been conducted on BT Brinjal. And the answer we got was that this was confidential business information. We had to go back to the Supreme Court because Gene Campaign has the first PIL in the Supreme Court on asking for transparency and regulatory oversight to be improved. How can anything that has the potential to damage public health be considered confidential information? Now, this flies in the face of logic, but yet this was the official answer from the government. In fact, it was the DBT that answered that the, uh, this information on safety is confidential. We are going through a process, it's been held in abeyance now, of redrafting the regulatory law. Uh, the National Biotechnology Regulatory Authority Bill of India is still billing, it's, and it should come, it should come really soon. And if the Prime Minister's office or the government or any other department of the government wants to push this technology, it has to bring in a law which, which shows citizens which is the roadmap that they're going and why we are going that way. And I think I would like to point out here, taking off again from what uh, from Chetan was saying, that people have to be involved. India is a signatory to what is called the Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety. In that, India has committed to public participation in decision making. So we are actually in default. We have to take on board public participation, public views, and none of that is happening. We are discussing the same issues 10 years down the line that we were discussing then without any clarity, without any movement, without any, uh, let us say, opening up of the sector to public concerns. And sure. I think the timing is now such that public concerns will mount into a more aggressive display, which would be very unfortunate. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Tajamul Haq, you know, this is not the first time that a GM crop really has come up. We've seen several experiments in the past. We have BT Cotton, we have BT Brinjal as well. You know, what have been the past experiences with, uh, with genetically modified crops? Yeah, the first of all, I should say in this particular case, as Dr. Suman Sai rightly mentioned, I mean, whether uh, this is an appropriate time for this. Second thing is that, as far as I know, the results of ICR national demonstration show that even some of our local varieties give you a better yield than this uh, GM mustard, which they are uh, suggesting. So, even in terms of yield advantage, it does not really promise so much. Second thing is that earlier also we have seen uh, the, the potential risk of this is that once this is released, uh, then this will pave the way for release of so many GM crop varieties which are, uh, uh, you know, uh, in the queue. And uh, the problem is that the foreign monopoly company uh, has a, a, a monopoly right over this kind of seed, and once they acquire this right, there is a danger uh, for the country uh, that 
uh, will lose not only seed sovereignty, but there will be a risk of, you know, to the farmers and also to the country. Uh, so I think uh, there are problems, and that is one reason. Even in the case of BT cotton, um, in fact, uh, I, I was, I will say that the yields of uh, BT cotton significantly improved initially, but not because the BT as such has any potential uh, yield kind of thing. But then what happened is that it reduces the pest attack, and as a result, the yield improves. But then even otherwise, for the last two, three years, we have seen uh, in the case of Punjab, the yield level has gone down, and the, there were pest attacks, and uh, the BT cotton was not, was uh, become susceptible to uh, several kind of uh, pests and insects, including white flies. And uh, uh, then in that case, they will say, yeah, they need to develop some new varieties again, which will be resistant to white flies and things like that. Mm -hmm. That will go on. I'm not against any technological innovations, but then point is, this is a food. BT cotton itself, I think people have quoted, there are some health risks in several cases, several animals died and all that. But then in this case, directly it comes to human food chain. And uh, I think uh, one has to be a little careful. Uh, that is what I can say. Yeah. Sure. I mean, that's that's a very valid point that you're making. At the end of the day, mustard is something that we consume directly. So, I mean, it goes directly into our food, into our system. And then, you know, we never know what really yes. ha what's going to happen after that. But N.K. Shukla, do you believe somewhere that a unilateral decision is yeah. being made as far as this issue is concerned? And, you know, as, as a member who represents farmers, do you believe that this is being pushed down your throat? <clears throat> yes. And uh, I am asking some question to the government and those who support the GM food, GM seeds. I am asking the government and those who support the GM food, I want to ask them something. Yes, ask them. One is that, first of all, there is no person of GEAC in the GEAC. There is no agriculture expert. No. One. And that is the decision. The other thing is, जो इसके बारे में हमें जानकारी मिली है टेक्निकल वर्ड है सभी लोग जानते होंगे ग्लोफोसिनेट बेस्ट पेस्टिसाइड ये है जो इसमें डाला जाएगा और डाला जाएगा तो ये पौधा तो नहीं मरेगा जीम सरसों का लेकिन उसका जो असर होगा फूड चेन पर असर होगा और फिर डालने के बाद वो नीचे जो जाएगा ड्रिंकिंग वाटर को कंटेमिनेट करेगा इसका क्या जवाब है एक और दूसरा जो ये लोग कहते हैं कि हमने टेस्ट किया है आपने कितने दिनों तक टेस्ट किया आप किसी जानवर को खिलाया उसका ब्लड टेस्ट किया किसी आदमी को खिलाया उसका ब्लड पर क्या असर पड़ता है तो हमारी जनता का एक वो जब फूड चेन में चला जाएगा तो हमारी जनता के स्वास्थ्य पर और इन्वायरमेंट पर पर्यावरण पर क्या असर पड़ेगा इसका कोई जाँच पड़ताल किया गया है और ये भी जानकारी मिली है कि जर्मनी की एक कंपनी है शायद बेयर कंपनी शायद उसका ये नाम है वो काफ़ी इंटरेस्टेड है वो ये जो पेस्टिसाइड है ग्लूफोसिनेट पेस्टिसाइड इसका भी उसके पास है और वो मोनोपोली भी चाहता है इस ये आने वाले दिनों में ये जीएम सीड्स का तो हमारे यहाँ के किसानों ने क्या गलती की है आज तक हजारों वर्षों से उन्होंने ये सरसों का देसी जो सरसों है उसको विकसित किया है कहीं कोई दिक्कत नहीं है लोग इस्तेमाल करते हैं उसका तेल इस्तेमाल करते हैं उसके पत्ते साग के रूप में खाते हैं आयुर्वेदिक दवाओं में उसका इस्तेमाल होता है जब आप उसमें इस ढंग की दवाइयाँ मिला देंगे पेस्टिसाइड मिला देंगे तो उसका आयुर्वेदिक दवाइयों में इस्तेमाल बिल्कुल बंद हो जाएगा जी और उसके बाद जो हेल्थ पर असर पड़ेगा वो तीसरी बात हम पूछना चाहते हैं कि एग्रीकल्चर जो है स्टेट सब्जेक्ट है कृषि जो है yes. राज्यों का विषय है तो हु हैज ऑथराइज द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट टू टेक ओवर द राइट ऑफ द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट राज्यों के अधिकार लेने का इनको क्या इजाजत दिया गया और आम जनता के स्वास्थ्य के साथ क्यों खिलवाड़ करने की कोशिश कर रहे जिसके पीछे एम और दूसरे कॉरपोरेट है पहले उन्होंने बीटी ब्रिंजल बैगन पर कोशिश किया और अब वो सरसों पर कोशिश कर रहे हैं इस तरह से एक एक जो हमारा जो खाने की जो चीज है 
वो कब्जा करना चाहते हैं और उसके बाद उनकी बीज बीज की मोनोपोली हो जाएगी जब भी किसानों को लेना है उनके यहां से खरीदना पड़ेगा और हमारा हजारों वर्षों का जो जो इस्तेमाल करके और जो प्रयोग करके किसानों ने यहां तक आप ठीक मैडम ने कहा उनको मदद करो उनका उनको उनको सब्सिडी दो खर्च दो उसके बाद उनको खरीदो मदद करो वो बढ़ेगा पैदावार बढ़ेगा आप छीनना क्यों चाहते दैट्स वेरी वैलिड पॉइंट दैट यू आर मेकिंग एंड यू मेक मेकिंग समथिंग यू आर सेइंग समथिंग एक्सट्रीमली कंसर्निंग एंड अलार्मिंग एज़ वेल आई मीन आई एम नो एक्सपर्ट बट लाइक ही इज टॉकिंग अबाउट यू नो द सोइल गेटिंग इरोडेड द यू नो द पेस्टिसाइड गोइंग इनटू इनटू द सिस्टम एज सच एंड यू नो दैट्स समथिंग दैट वी गोइंग टू कंज्यूम लेटर ऑन इन द फॉर्म ऑफ द वाटर दैट वी ड्रिंक फ्रॉम देयर ऑल दिस साउंड्स वेरी अलार्मिंग बट द जीईएसी हैज आल्सो सेड दैट the the permission is being given under certain conditions do we know what these conditions are really no, I, so far gac has not disclosed the conditions <clears throat> what are the conditions so <clears throat> basically they have i think what the sources are saying is seven to eight conditions they have listed out in the recommendation to the government which talks about first doing it in limited area and then doing in commercial release in a larger scale but Um, I think the biggest issue is that the government has not examined, or GEC has not examined the Supreme Court appointed technical committee. They have made a huge recommendations of moratorium on GM crops for ten years, and they have raised a large number of issues, which I think the government has not been able to address. GEC has not been able to address. The second point is that BD cotton, which the government <coughs> said that it has done so well for the Indian farming community, except Gujarat. If you see the example of bt cotton in karnataka andhra pradesh the production did not go up and the government of andhra pradesh has to impose an order of pricing order on uh, the company which was selling it because they increased the price tenfold in just few years mm. so these sort of concerns which the state governments have raised have not been addressed by the central government at all and i think uh, and the gm mustard it goes into the food chain like you have last number of questions what will happen to the soil what will happen to the pest what will happen to me what will happen to others has not been addressed and what professor pentel's uh, institute have said that it will increase production by 20 to 30 percent can and the field trials have not been able to answer whether it can actually do and 20 to 30 percent increase in production can be done to different methods without introducing gm crops sure. so why the government has not explored the alternate And why they are pushing the GM crops? So this is the big question everybody is asking. Right. And I think Environment Minister at this point of time he needs to address these issues before he gives any sort of a view on GM mustard. Sure. You know what's what's next, Suman Sai? I mean, what's 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 likely to happen? It's so ridiculous. I don't know what to say. You're saying that the GAC has given its approval, and and it's ridiculous that the Genetic Engineering Approval Committee has been changed to Appraisal Committee. has given its approval with caveats what caveats when it's gone into the farmers field and it has gone into an an open area what are you going to control you can't control anything and that is precisely the point when genetically engineered crops get into the field they do their own thing and there is no way you can control that so in this connection i'd like to raise one point which falls by the wayside and that is a question of liability laws hmm. when these things are put out into the field they have to be properly contained in a legal framework and a legal framework means a law on liability and redress which means should something go wrong who is going to be held responsible sure when bt cotton fails why want the technology providers made to pay and that is why you have to have laws that when something goes wrong should something and things will go wrong the united states of america which is the the strongest proponent of this technology mm. and in a lot of ways is the incubator of this technology has some of the strongest liability laws when liberty link rice was contaminating other rice buyer which owned that uh, liberty link technology had to pay something like 750 million dollars it was possible to make buyer pay because there's a law in place. Yeah, we need something like that here. Similarly, like that. when Starlink happened, Aventis had to pay something like 1 billion dollars to sure, clean I, up the mess. Yeah, so, but, we, we get the point. We no, get the point. The liability law, like environment protection law has a liability provision. But in India, it has never been invoked. As sure. in case it has been invoked in case certain case in Gujarat recently, so the government decided that it does not apply 
So the liability law in India is very weak, even in environmental cases, it has been weak and it has, the government does not want to invoke it in any case because I cannot do it. I think you stressed the point law enough as far here. as liability itself is concerned. Uh, I'm, I'm running out of time, so quick closing comments from both my other guests who have not had a say so far, of course. Uh, N.K. Shukla, do you believe that the allied sector is going to be affected as a result of uh, uh, GM mustard? Yes, so all allied sectors will be affected. Farmers will be affected. Your health will be affected. Soil will be affected. Drinking water will be affected. Sara cheez hamara prabhavit hoga. Pani prabhavit hoga. Jameen prabhavit hoga. Or sirf hamara hini food chain me jane ke baad. Aane wali jo nasle hongi. Wo prabhavit hogi. Jo kuch ino ne test kiya hai. Janta ke saamne lana chahiye. Bilkul chipa kar ke kaam kar rahe hai. I, I think we stressed that point enough as well. Yes. 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 Should not have the exclusive jurisdiction to decide on that, even if it goes otherwise favorably, because the, it is a state subject and a state government should be taken into confidence. This is one. Second thing is that unless the Supreme Court decides, the central government will not go about it. So there is no question uh, that uh, we are going ahead. Third thing is that if it, if all these you know, things also become very clear and get cleared, then also there is a risk, as I said. Uh, that this will pave the way for all other GM crop varieties right. to come, irrespective of whether good or bad. And then, uh, as Suman Sahid correct, rightly said, mm -hmm. the conditions, no matter whatever conditions you impose, once it goes to the field, those conditions will never apply. And as a result, the risks that we are talking about will continue to pose a real problem. So I think we should be very careful, very careful and I think the government, I mean, we can wait, as I rightly said, uh, that uh, I think there are better varieties right. than this GM mustard, even in terms of increasing yield. So I sure. think people should go for it. Second thing is that the, there should be wider consultation with the farmers and all other scientists, not a few scientists who decide uh, this kind of uh, you know, uh, uh, things. So right. I think I'm going to cut you short there, there are uh, ways to do things Mr. better. Huck, because so I'm, I'm sure the I'm government will do it that way. I'd like to thank all my guests, uh, Chetan Chauhan, Suman Sahai, Tajamul Haq, N.K. Shukla for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us. The consensus here is a holistic approach is required as far as dealing with GM crops as well as agriculture on the whole in this country. On that note, I'll have to call it a wrap. Thank you so much for watching. See you again next time.